Hi my artist friends, I hope you are pumped to paint. Today I am demonstrating how to paint a still life with watercolor and especially breaking down for you the steps that you have to follow in order to represent a still life subject with negative painting. For once it's not a natural subject like a leaf, a flower, fruit, vegetable, mushroom, shell, because I like so much also this day-to-day -day mundane subject. Let's paint the tea bag I just made my tea with. Hey, hey, you, me, and Juicy, hopefully like my watercolor. So, yeah, surprise and your friend with unusual subject to paint. Now, here we are, negative painting step one is picking a light subject or putting it in front of a darker background. The background doesn't have to be really dark, just a slightly darker than the subject, or you can even imagine that it's darker than the subject, and sometimes the light does the trick too. Step number two, observe and study the outline at the top of the subject, which is catching the light. So try to figure out how the silhouette is, are the angle, is the shape symmetrical? Teach your brain how is the outline you are about to create. Step number three, pick a color for the background. Don't always go for the boring wood color of your table or background. You can be creative with the background color. Picking the complementary color regarding to the subject color is a really nice choice. For example, here the tea is going to have a bit of a golden color here and there, so I am picking some blue tone to complement it really well. Also, think about picking enough color and water in your brush so that you can create a juicy wash that is not going to dry on you in 30 seconds. You need to stay a bit wet so that you can have time to create the whole outline without getting unwanted edges. Now, negative painting step four is start by defining the top of your subject by holding your brush upside down or horizontally. So put your hand at the top of the subject and hold your brush upside down and focus on this outline that we studied earlier to try to create it with the brush. Please note how the tip of the brush is creating the subject outline while the belly of the brush is painting the background around your subject. So just focus on the tip of the brush for focus on the outline, not on the fact that you are painting with a negative shape and that you are painting outside your subject, but focus on the edge itself so that your brain doesn't get mad at you because you are painting negatively. Step number five, correct the outline while it's still wet. That's what I am doing just right now. You can always refine the shape by making it uh, slightly smaller. So if you don't feel so confident, start making it slightly bigger than you would think so that you can correct it easily if needed. But don't fiddle. Step number six is uh, keep defining uh, the outline of the subject at the bottom while everything is still wet to create the whole shape. And step number seven is uh, keep filling the background with paint uh, quickly. In fact, I recommend to do step six and step seven a bit alternating and at the same time, which means that you are touching regularly the outside edge of uh, your wash so that it doesn't uh, dry on you while you keep uh, creating the outline of the subject. So a bit of the outline and then you wet the edges of the background and you keep working on the outline and so on and so on. For the background filling at step uh, number seven, you can make it with color variation and a crazy technique like mine with splattering and everything. But you can also work with an uh, even wash going up uh, to the edges of the paper or the masking tape if you prefer, of course. Step number eight for a nice negative painting is add a strong brush stroke with a darker pigment underneath uh, your subject in order to anchor it uh, to the surface you put it on. I did it uh, wet in wet, which means while the previous wash was still wet. So using a brush with uh, not too much water and a really strong pigment and just making one brush stroke underneath the shape. Here I am painting the tea bag uh, tag a bit uh, on a wet paper along with dry paper so that it can create a nice kind of a fusing effect. And a few splatters on my background so that it can create a bit more color variations and effect. If the splatter doesn't go where you want it to, you can just dab a tissue on it uh, right away to remove it like in here on the white part. Step number nine, let it dry if needed and then add a really light wash on your subject to create a volume and add a tiny bit of details, but really, really, really pay attention not to cover up all your white. 
the experience I got from uh, working on my painting is usually the more I uh, cover the shape and fill it uh, with even a light wash or color, the less the negative painting is powerful at the end, which is uh, quite uh, logical when you think about it. So what I really recommend is be careful about keeping the pristine white of the paper, maybe at least in a half the shape of your subject, something like that. In the parts you want to paint, use a really light wash not to lose too much of the powerful uh, impact of uh, the negative painting and use only a few darker strokes uh, to strengthen the contrast on your subject but not too much. In here I still want to depict a bit of the tea at the bottom of the bag which is quite dark when you look at it so I am using a bit of a darker wash uh, at the bottom but it doesn't kill the effect because the main shape of the bag remains uh, really white and really light it's only at the bottom. And anyway because of the light on your subject you will often have uh, this kind of a form shadow at the bottom even on a fruit or something so it's pretty common that uh, you have uh, this uh, stronger wash at the bottom for your negative painting and that's why I focused uh, especially on getting the top of uh, the outline right at the beginning of this tutorial. And now to evoke a bit of the loose tea in the bag what could be better than uh, nice splatters creating a kind of random effect. Hear me Anthony I can't seem to find what I'm seeking in Misplaced all my love and way of thinking Carried in the current of last year Help me, Anthony My mistakes are finally catching up I ignore the simple acts of love Let them rust all bundled up with did you notice how I used the negative painting in here also to depict uh, the thread and also to reinforce uh, the presence of the tag? And now I am filling the background around the thread and the tag like at step number 7. By now I am at uh, step uh, number 10 which is about finishing the painting with just a few finishing touches but uh, please resist overworking and pay attention not to kill your white at the end, really important. Songs that make my father mother cry So why am I compelled to like these birds of a slide? I need some amplified where grace and peace collide negative painting and feel free to tell me which other technique or subject you would like a kind of a breaking down of the techniques like that. I will see you really soon but until next time have fun and create. Missed all my love and way of thinking Carried in the current of flash